what's up everybody it's nerp here and new series today spectate series so many of you have been requesting this so i decided to give it a shot i'm not sure if uh i'm the best one at doing it uh you can go check out the badger guild youtube channel because smogan has some really good uh spectate analysis videos on there like kind of what like way to fail self i did a while back but um, i'm gonna try to do something like that uh because many people ask me and we'll see how it goes so today i just i'm spectating a ranked match between two um, reasonably rated players. They're both in the 1600s, and this should be a good match. Um, Slain M is playing, I think they're both playing Decay, and I think Vulcan Hin has a splash of order. So this should be a very interesting match, and I'll try to analyze both plays, uh, maybe uh, say what if I think there would have been a better play, and this should be, this should be a fun match to see. And, I don't know, it was, for the next few days, r just ranked in judgment videos, probably gonna be a little bit annoying. Alright, so here the game starts. So, Selenium gets a Infectious Blight, so maybe he's playing with a Poison deck. He draws a new hand, and this hand is probably a little bit better because it's 2-drop, and Bloodline Taint is probably really important. Vulcan Hand is playing with a Puppet Soldier. And Horn of Ages. So he that's the order splashes for. Blessing of Haste and Horn of Ages with a Puppet Soldier. So this should be fun to watch. Um, I assume he's going to play the Ripper turn one. Maybe sacrifice the Horn of Ages. Probably. Or, or the Blessing of Haste. I guess he wants the Horn of Ages Puppet Soldier early on. And let's see. So against a DVD. 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 <laughs> in Decay vs. Decay. I was going to say Watcher might not be valuable early game. But he like the launcher there. He sacrifices the life stamp. Surprise! I, if I were Vulcan, I would have sacrificed Ilmire Hunter because that could be easily languided in Decay vs. Decay, and Life Stealer is very strong. So it goes for the Brain Lice. Uh, solid choice there. And now Vulcan Hin, Aging Knights. Too. That's an interesting splash. So I think obviously the Blight Bearer here, down or up somewhere, or actually, yeah, right in the middle because. For a second, I thought he was on that side of the board. The other thing, you know, poisoned anyway. So now, um, I guess sacrifice the Watcher and play the Harvester. Hmm, it's really sacrifice. I guess it doesn't really matter if you sacrifice after, if you're just sacrificing for resources. Whatever. Um, but that Blight Bear is going to be a problem for Slain. And Vulcan does not does have a Puppet Soldier uh, Horn Rage, but he does get rid of it to play the uh, Onlyer Hunter. Interesting he values Horn of Ages more. I think that is true, but Puppet Soldier is nothing on its own, really. But Horn of Ages does. So let's see. If Slain wants to get the Pillar Fatigue out now, that would actually be good at protecting him. Or he could go for just the Oblivion Seeker and just try to draw some cards and lure him in. So we'll see. It looks like he is going for the Oblivion Seeker. Okay, so. Solid choice there. And now, I suspect Vulcan is just going to Infectious Blight the Harvester here. Yeah. So that harvest is probably not going to attack. I don't think four creatures are going to die in three turns before that thing is able to like die. So too bad for Slain. Vulcan Hin looks to have a solid advantage so far in the match. You could see he moved away from killing the Oblivion Seeker too. He doesn't want him to draw that extra card draw. So now Slain has a choice. He can sacrifice the Curse Miner for resources and play the Pillar for Deke and Harvester. But Harvesters on round six are not that strong. So he goes for the Curse Miner, which is amazing in Decay vs. Decay sacrifices the pillar fatigue and he draws an eager eager scryer now he probably would have wanted that pillar fatigue surprise he didn't surprise slain didn't move the oblivion seeker up so he could chase him up there and just deal damage to him i probably would have chased him up okay so now slain's turn again and ooh, draining miss okay, so he's playing a lot of people are playing draining miss lately in ranked it, it seems like a very good uh good scroll against aggro order which is pretty popular um, so, and is he going to Draining Mist? <laughs> so, double Harvester on the field. Pretty strong, but you know one of those is going to die very soon. Uh, it looks close to even on the board right now because, in my, in my opinion, I think Cursemonger is probably the biggest threat on the board right now. Even more than the Harvester down there. Um, is he going to be able to kill him? Well, he goes for Blessing Haste because he knows he can Soul Steal next turn. He wants to be able to use two Soul Steals. So, but at least that Cur Curse Monitor is going to have one turn to curse something or attack. And But, but Slain does have an Infectious Blight, so he can probably... What I would do is I would probably curse this one, this Hunter, down here. Hmm, interesting. 
I would have cursed that hunter down there and put give it an infectious bite so it dies in two turns without attacking, so it wouldn't get to attack. Because if you do this one, it would still get one attack off. I think since this guy's dying anyways, and this guy's dying anyways, I would just leave this blight bearer alone probably. But he gets the watcher, so he's gonna get some watcher hits from the poison. I remember that brings me back up. I remember I have um match a while back, I think it was against Rot Spengel. I had two watchers in the middle of the board, he was poison decay. I was so behind the match, I was gonna lose. But when I got uh, when my guys around a watcher, he double Meyer cursed it. And then I just kept on putting creatures around the watcher and I just kept on counting down and I I kept on pinging the idols and I eventually won. It was awesome. So let's see, if Vulcanhin decides to kill the curse mo the Oblivion Seeker now that's attacking, probably would do that now. That's probably what he's going to do. But then that Harvester is going to go, he, that Harvester in the back is going to attack. Because, right, you, are you, wait, no, you won't attack. Whoops, at first I thought he was cursed, so he won't die. Alright, so, the Harvester's only going to be two counts, I know. Necrogeddon. Mm, not too bad. If he moves up Necrogen, he can go down and kill this. And this. That wouldn't be a bad play. I think I'd actually... Mm, maybe you don't want to do that because you have... Because you have a two counts on Harvester. But this guy's dying to poison anyways. And you have a Blooming Seeker for card draw. So at this point, yeah, I think I probably would sacrifice the Draining Mist. Move up Necrogen and kill this and this. And that looks like that's what he's going to do. Yeah. I mean, you can always just play the curse monger and be safe, but I think I mean, three. I keep I'm not showing the idols, but um, yeah, that's certainly a pretty good play. And now all Vulcan him. See, he kind of pulled it into his favor again. Even though he has less, a less powerful creatures than Hulse now, they're still creatures that will do stuff. And Vulcan him has to come back now, but luckily for him, he had Soul Steel, so that Soul Steel is such a good card. It has so much value. You take one of your opponent units and give yourself your own unit. Um, so now let's see. I'm not. I don't think damage cursing. Uh, this is this uh hunter is a huge. I don't think you should do that because I don't think it's a huge threat. Actually, maybe if he doesn't have language, I haven't seen language from Slain yet. Um. At he's at five. He's at seven resources, which means he can't really do much this turn. He could really only play one. He could necro again, but. Since that soul steal, he can't really destroy this back here, so it'd be kind of pointless. So yeah, I guess, I guess Necrogen is a decent play there. Yeah, I guess that's really the only play you could make. You could play the Curse Monger and give up one of the husks. Puppet Soldier. I want to see. I want to see Vulcanhin get some Puppet Soldier thing off. I really want to see that. <laughs> I want to see Vulcanhin do it. I actually um played Vulcanhin ranked earlier today he was playing this deck i believe and uh, i was playing structure energy and oh, that was a nice uh draining mist but he was playing stru structure i was playing structure energy and he just he tried to put uh puppet soldiers in front of my oculus cannons and her and moved like oblivion seekers in front to make them attack and try to make the oblivion seeker and puppet soldier die so then the oculus cannon either bomb the forge all of a sudden that road would blow up but the puppet soldier is nerfed now it doesn't blow up when you uh do direct uh, damage on it. So I just burned it, machine chanted it, all that stuff. It was pretty fun. Um, so Vulcan hit his Pothers too. And I guess that's a pretty fine Pother because you just don't want it really in the middle so it's harder to get uh, things off. And also that means the Infectious Blight won't do extra two da damage. And it jumps onto this guy, which I think you'd rather have it go on this guy. This guy's attacking right now, it won't attack for another three turns. Nero's Needle, that's an interesting scroll too. These It's nice to see, it's refreshing to see different all these cool new decks that are popping up. Everybody's always like the meta stale right now. You know, I kind of agree. It is <laughs> I, I'm not having that much fun playing in it. But I don't know why though. These decks are all so like there's a lot of different decks out there. Every fact is being played. Horn of Ages. The Vulcan does not have a puppet in hand. Anyways, if you put a Horn of Ages Puppet Soldier here, like, the Curse Monger could just curse something. Instead of attacking. But, um, it looks like Selene is giving up that idol, so... This Rod Eater Kenmuto is going to kill this idol. Unless, if he wants to get rid of the Infectious Blight, he could Soul Steal his own Rod Eater. That wouldn't be the worst idea, but I don't think I would do it. I think I'd rather this turn just get a Life Stealer out. 
probably sacrifice the Horn of Ages or no. He's going for a Rot Eater. Hmm. I don't know why you would put down a Rot Eater instead of Life Stealer if you have the resources. I don't see the, the reason why a Rot Eater is in any way better than a Life Stealer. Especially in Decay and K versus Decay matchup. I'd much rather have the Life Stealer. And now let's see. I think uh, Slain can start ramping up to a little more decay, more like 8 or 9. Bulkin seems like he's on low resources because of the uh, wild, though. He actually has like 5 decay for order. So, I wonder if Vulcan. I didn't see any speed or tempo thefts. That's usually what you have in decay order with harvesters. But uh, it seems like he's more of a Blessing of Haste, Pother, and Horn of Ages. So now Slain looks like he has advantage because he has, I think, a resource advantage just a bit. And um, Vulcan Hin, there's not much he could do this turn but put down creatures. I and mean, this does have Infectious Blight, so if he wants to get Bloodline Tainted that one human, I don't think that's worth it. So he goes for the Languid. And a. Okay, so that's gonna ensure that the Curse Miner is dead before it attacks, which is pretty important. So let's see if Slain has anything to. Uh, kill that rot eater but it does have infectious blight so i think you might just want to let it survive I, yeah you probably let it survive but it, it can deal five damage to an idol or destroy that thing okay that was that was pretty good play by slain so he puts down that uh pillar of fatigue now this guy does not get to um does not get to attack before he dies and now vulcan has another decision does he put down a creature? He keeps the infectious blight if he puts down a creature. He doesn't have to worry about this curse monger cursing that creature because the curse monger is dead. He's the double poison. So Slain looks like he slowly pulled himself an advantage. Um So now Vulcan Hen. Is that much he, I, I'm not sure if he wants to put down a creature. Maybe he'll just like soul steal this Darkling and and like uh doesn't have enough, enough resources to do a lot of stuff. And that just moves it back into the middle. Um, but that was a two-thirds chance of it moving into this guy's uh, line so he can destroy it so that's pretty good but um, maybe he'll just bloodline taint these guys up here yeah and he does play down a unit I don't agree with putting down the unit there because the infectious is just gonna jump to it I would have just held off in that one cost creature for another turn so slain Watcher's dead, it's kind of annoying for him, and he can't really do anything this turn. I mean, he's not really going to Necrogun, probably, because these units are practically dead for a uh, Vulcan Hen. That one is Infectious Blight. He, pro he probably just wants to get an Eager Sword right now. You know what? I don't think he's going to uh, do anything this turn. Yeah, I don't think he's going to do anything. Not even move, but yeah, because then your units get, uh, your countdown increased. So now that thing has, so now... Double Harvester is pretty good. So, probably see that. And look at him, we'll try to claw his way back. And let's see where it puts the Harvester. Puts it here. Maybe you'd want to put it out in the bottom row so then it, it doesn't have to raise count and destroy the Pillar of Fatigue. I don't know. So, that double uh, Bloodline Taint was able to destroy one of these dudes. But now. Since that Infectious Blight jumped to this little Darkling, Slain M can destroy the Infectious Blight by just sacrificing his Darkling. And I think that's what you would want to do here. Maybe move him up and sacrifice too, because then you get, uh, this guy has more attack and health. And he does get an Eager Sword out, so now Slain's gonna get more card draw, be able to ramp higher. Um, and Damage Curse is pretty good for him to have because he can Damage Curse that Harvester later. So definitely he should move this Darkling right here and sacrifice it so this thing gets bigger and he loses the Infectious Blight. Because this thing's dying. This thing's dying soon anyways. Oh no, is he... Is he gonna sacrifice himself? Oh, come on, he should've sacrificed... I think he definitely should've sacrificed himself there. Um, but Slain M can actually win pretty soon with the Necro Gun. Uh, Bloodline Taint Infectious Blight. So is that going to kill him? He is like double curse, right? Yeah, it is going to kill him. You see, if he sacrificed, that wouldn't kill him this turn. If he sacrificed next to him, that wouldn't have killed him. Um, now, see now, Vulcan Hin might be able to come back. I would probably 
go ahead. You have Infectious Blight. Um, maybe just Damning Curse this Harvester and destroy the Infectious Blight with a Damning Curse now. And let this Harvester just attack this Idol. It's only 6 attack, I mean. I'll take the huge yield to let it attack that idol. It's not destroying anything. I would probably damage curse and then put an Elmer and Trives in it. So we'll see. Or maybe he wants to double infectious like this. Alright, puts that out and maybe is he gonna Necrogen to destroy the zone infectious blights? That wouldn't be too bad. But I think it would be better just to damn curse. Because then you have this five attack thing attacking next turn. More idle damage for you when you, I mean, you, have, you have a Necrogun incoming. I'd probably save Necrogun for a win con. Um, he moves, and he is going to Necrogun. Okay, this destroys Infectious Blights on both sides. But, I mean, I think I'd probably, myself, uh, have gone the Damning Curse. Because now Vulcanin, there's no Infectious Blights on Vulcanin's side. But at the same time, there's really no wrong play there because slain m would be ahead either play he made because he has more resources now and it's, it's it'll be hard for vulcan to come back from this but slain m just uses necrogen so now he doesn't have another one to use until he draws another one he's his deck is recycling soon too so that's good for him um he's moving away from that puppet soldier I don't think Vulcan should have put the Puppet Soldier in that row because a one health idol can just be brought down by a Darkling or, or a Watcher thing, so I think it would be better like this, like on a middle idol so he doesn't get to take middle idol or something like that. But Vulcan in Surrenders, I think the game was pretty much over. It was a very slim chance uh, Vulcan could win that. But it was a well played match on both sides, I believe. Um, Maybe in the future I'll, I'll uh, spectate higher ranked matches and uh, we'll see what we can do there. Maybe, hope you guys like this new series. Many of you guys requested it, so hopefully it's what you guys wanted. Um, so like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want more content like this, and make sure you submit your top plays to Scrolls Top Plays of the Week. I'm sure I'm going to see some top plays in my spectate series. I, I'll f I figure I'll weave this into um, weave this into the ranked and judgment and mixing up all that and then the top plays of the week on Friday and stuff like that. I'll also probably do an ESL video for the growth tournament and maybe the Highlander tournament. Wasn't able to do it for energy indicator because it wasn't home, but I did it for order if you don't remember that. So that'll be it for today and keep on scrolling everybody.